Simon and Richter Belmont. Harkening back to the original Castlevania on the NES, the renowned vampire hunters of the famous Belmont clan has made their debut in the biggest crossover in gaming history, Super Smash Bros. Ultimate. Here's everything you need to know to master the Belmonts. Simon and Richter's greatest strength is their ability to control space. They have a multitude of unique projectiles and long-ranged attacks that allow them to dominate both onstage and offstage. In terms of differences, they're pretty much identical in the moveset aside from certain differences in aesthetics and animations. For this guide, I'll primarily be talking about Simon, but rest assured, everything I will say will also apply to Richter too. Simon wields the legendary Vampire Killer Whip that has been passed down the generations of the Belmont clan. It is used throughout his normals, aerials and smash attacks and allow him to attack from a distance. You can see this with his side tilt, a move that will be very familiar for anyone who has played Castlevania. A fast whip strike that is great for catching opponents by surprise and can be pretty difficult to deal with due to its speed. Most of Simon's whip moves have considerable startup to them, so this is one of the few whip attacks he has that is relatively safe. It also has the added property of being able to nullify projectiles, and this will apply to all moves that use the whip, allowing him to deal with characters who may try to outzone him. The only drawback being that it has a very narrow hitbox, and some characters can easily duck under it. This will be a common theme for most of his whip based moves, due to the hitbox lying primarily on the whip itself, with the sweet spot lying at the spiked ball at the end. The same goes for his up tilt, it does not have any horizontal hitbox, so it can only be used for airborne opponents. But once you connect, it can often combo into itself and potentially allow you to follow up into either an up air or an up smash. His jab attack and dash attack are both great tools for mixing things up or whenever you feel your opponent is getting a bit too close for comfort. You see, Simon doesn't deal well with characters who get in his face, because it shuts down a lot of his best moves, which primarily strike at a distance and are slower to come out. So his jab attack and dash attack are great for quickly dealing damage and keeping opponents away. Your down tilt also serves the same function and comes in two parts. An initial slide that can be used to dodge projectiles, and a secondary jump kick that launches Simon diagonally. This is a great getaway move, for when you just want to get the fuck out of there, so you can resume your assault at a more safer distance. The initial slide by itself can also hit enemies at the ledge, and its hitbox actually extends outside the ledge as well, so you can use it to catch enemies off guard. Now before we move on to the rest of his moveset, let's address a unique mechanic exclusive to the whip. So in the words of Nintendo themselves, let's go floppy. By holding the A button in place, you're able to freely move the whip around in complete 360 degrees. Very few moves in Smash actually allow full control over it, so having Simon have one is pretty interesting. Its actual viability is questionable though. It can nullify light projectiles and will damage anyone caught in it, but naturally if you just you know, flop it out mid-battle, you're just gonna get wrecked. But it does make for one hell of an annoying edge gutter. His smash attacks are beastly, to say the least. They boast the highest range of any non-projectile smash attack in the game. His side smash alone outranges both Corrin and Shulks, and his up smash can reach the top of a battlefield platform by itself. Even his down smash, while not as long reaching as the other two, is still formidable at punishing rolls. Your side and up smash are what will net you the most kills though. Just be wary of their slow startup and narrow hitbox. I mean, if you're one of those players who are used to running in and performing sliding up smashes, you're going to be very disappointed with Simon. These attacks require serious precision, but we'll talk about some useful setups for these moves later. I would recommend performing his side smash with a running reversal, as it's great for hiding the initial startup frames. It's also really great for catching opponents off the stage as well. Now, if his smashes are beastly, then his aerials are in a league of their own. His up air, forward air, and back air all incorporate the whip for some of the longest range aerials in the game. Even characters who are notorious for having loads of projectiles would dream of having this kind of range for their aerials. Your forward and back air are excellent for attacking at a distance and approaching, while his up air allows him to juggle without any of the risk. They do have razor thin hitboxes, so you'll need timing and placement to score a hit, but his forward and back air can be angled to better hit grounded or aerial opponents. They also double as tether recoveries which is usually a better option than his actual recovery. 
His new Shredder is one of his fastest aerials, being a quick twirl of the whip, one of his only multi-hitting attacks that can be useful for getting opponents off his back in the air. If you fast fall with it, you can also directly combo into moves like your grab, jab attack, or down tilt. Your down air is a dive kick that has Simon bounce off upon contact, often letting you follow up with a forward air. The move is relatively safe even if they shield it, because you can bounce away and cover your fall with an aerial. I also found it can be used as a means of getting back to the stage quickly if you find yourself launched higher in the air, as Simon and Richter have limited tools for covering their descent. Let's quickly go over his grabs and throws. Now, despite having a long, massive whip, he still uses his hand to grab for some reason, and he does suffer a little for it because it means he needs to put himself at risk a little. But when you do manage to grab them, his strongest throw is his forward throw, which can kill at 125% at the edge of a final destination stage. At low percentages, down throw can combo into dash attack or side smash. After a down throw, you can also attempt to predict a tech roll by throwing your axe or your cross. At medium percentages, up throw can true combo into up air, and down throw true combos into short hop forward air. Let's kick off his specials with the cross, which is easily in the running for best projector in the entire game. Let me tell you why. Executing it normally doesn't seem all that special, but it really shines when you execute the move as if you were performing a smash attack. In this variant, it travels more than half the length of a final destination stage, and upon return, it will cover the full length of it. Absolutely insane. Who in Nintendo thought this was a good idea? No other character in this game has this amount of control of space, because as soon as you throw that cross, you essentially own that entire section of horizontal space. So on the ground, it can be an absolute nightmare for characters to deal with. Simon is also completely free to move after throwing it, and the cross moves independent of him. So even if he ends up getting attacked or grabbed, the cross will continue on its path. It can be deflected back by another attack, but unless it's a true reflect, it won't actually affect Simon. Characters like DDD will get their ass handed to them if their projectiles are deflected, but not Simon. Having his cross deflected is equivalent to catching a tennis ball for Simon. And there's loads of tricky shit you can do with this move, like throwing the cross above you to force falling opponents to land a certain way, throwing it behind you and setting up for a calculated up smash upon its return, or grabbing your opponent after throwing it and have them take the hit while being pummeled at the same time. There is honestly no reason for you not to be using this move at every opportunity you can, because it is essential for Simon's ability to control space. I can say the same for the Holy Water. It may not have the range of the cross, but it's equal in its potency. Upon impact, it creates a pillar of flames that can trap opponents momentarily, setting up for a grab, axe throw, or smash attack. It's crazy good as a pressure tool, especially for edge guarding. Just remember that it only executes when it hits the ground, so if you hit your opponent directly with it, it will bounce off them first and only execute once it hits the ground. So if you chuck it off stage, even if you hit your opponents directly, it will never actually execute the flames. But this does mean that it bounces off shields. It has this sort of funky trajectory in the air as well. It's not affected by gravity like most thrown items, so it can be used to cover your fall. Just be wary that your opponent is able to catch it and use it against you. And of course the cross and holy water go hand in hand with the axe. It's his slowest and most powerful projectile, capable of killing by itself. It can also be angled using the directional buttons for a shorter or further throw. I probably wouldn't recommend using the axe by itself as it's incredibly slow and easily punishable, but it works really well when complemented with his other specials. You can usually follow a holy water with an axe throw, or after you hit your opponent with the cross on the way back, but where the axe becomes really scary is when you're edge guarding with it. The reason being is that you don't even have to be at the ledge to do it. If you stand in the middle of the stage and throw the far variant of the axe, it will pass through where your opponent will normally be holding onto the ledge. And let me tell you, this is an absolutely terrifying prospect for anyone hanging onto that ledge. In a situation like this, they have one of three options. They can jump, in which case they'll get an axe to the face, get up normally, which can be easily intercepted by a cross, or roll, which, well, I think you know what happens next. The whole point of edge guarding is that the one who is doing the edge guarding is still putting themselves at risk a little. 
but in Simon's case, he can edge guard completely scot free. In comparison, his up special is definitely the runt of his specials, a pretty standard up cut with somewhat average height coverage. It does cover a potential blind spot for Simon, so you can use it as a surprise attack, but generally I would stick to using this as a recovery. And let's finish things off with Simon's final smash, the glorious Grand Cross. Ultimately, to master Simon or Richter, you simply need to play them as if you were playing a level of Castlevania. Keep those monsters at bay with your holy water, cross and axe. Vanquish your foes using your long range stripe of your vampire killer whip. And make use of your sliding kick and faster moves to keep your opponents off you when they get too close. So go on, and drive a stake into the hearts of your adversaries with the Belmonts. So, who do you want me to make a guide for next? Please let me know in the comments below, as I'll be looking directly at the comments of this video to decide who the next character will be, based on who's the most requested or most liked. Naturally, if you felt I missed anything, or have your own tips and tricks for Simon and Richter, please share them down in the comments below too. And of course, be sure to like the video if you enjoyed it and found it helpful, and subscribe for more guides on Smash Ultimate. Take care guys, and I'll see you in the next one.